Welcome to New Balance of World Power, the 19th century golden age, 1850 to 1905. This is Melinda Klein. The 50 years leading up to 1914 marked a dynamic age of material prosperity in the West. In the U.S., Canada, and Western Europe, the concept of progress means the following. The promotion and investment in sanitation systems. Beginning the process of standardized housing and building codes. Raised awareness of public health and labor issues. And finally, promoted scientific advancements in medicine, technology, and practical inventions. Between 1870 and 1914, progress meant a better standard of living in Western industrial nations. Historians call this period hallmarked by electricity the Second Industrial Revolution. By the mid-19th century, national conflicts arose between competing powers for access to raw materials. Additionally, the national unification process took hold in parts of Europe. Former areas of the Holy Roman Empire, Austria, Germany, Hungary, and Italy. Centralization effects and the formation of nation-states in these areas remained constitutional monarchies until the end of World War I. Lastly discussed here is that of Japan an emerging industrial nation from the 1860s and a powerful imperial player until 1945. In colonial cities from India to South Africa, Western-style construction required university-trained engineers, cement, and steel to build bridges, railroad lines, and tall buildings. Industrial nations and their colonies needed steel. By the end of the century, steel and iron were replacing the needs for wood. The British built railroads in India, South Africa, and Egypt in the name of trade for the movement of goods and people. Railroads became important to the economy connecting rural and urban market and port cities. Profound changes occurred in industrial nations. Populations increased while a new idea was developed to aid in carrying away human waste. By the end of the 19th century, Europeans became one-third of the world's population. In industrial nations, many people lived in cities. With imperial colonies or the development of Commonwealth nations became the final destination for Europeans. Why? These new European colonies had the customary laws, economy, culture, and politics known at home, yet they represented places where opportunity for land ownership, professional advancement, and adventure away from home loomed large. By the 1880s, British and U.S. working-class male voters who had taken part in labor reforms were eager and encouraged to become a part of the existing political system. Changes made in the judicial branches of industrial nations meant laws were for everyone, including the regulation of business. There were so many male voters that socialism became a popular political focus for this underprivileged group. It gained momentum in Europe, but was tagged with subversive activities in the United States, especially after Russia became a communist nation in 1917. By the turn of the 19th century, married middle-class women became prominent figures in social reform in the age of growing wealth that revolved around industry and capital. But many women had to work. Middle-class unmarried women became self-educated or took night or day classes learning clerical work, specifically technical operations of business machines such as the typewriter, accounting methods, and learning shorthand. 
office work was clean and respectable. Old style clerks, handwriting letters, reports, and keeping ledgers wasted enormous man hours and counting rows of numbers and sending business communications. Younger men eagerly entered business offices as new style clerks, salesmen, and in law offices and civil service fields. All the while, women with typewriting and clerical skills entered new jobs that emerged. Liberalism in the 19th century was a philosophical concept born out of Enlightenment thought. It emerged as a middle-class ideology from the French Revolution and beyond. Until the 1860s, liberalism held that it was a role of the people to make their wishes known by using the parliamentary, congressional, political process. After World War I, and especially after World War II, diplomacy in the West is held in very high regard on keeping the peace between competing nations, especially when the powers have conflicting ideologies, such as the nations of the Middle East, Europe, and the United States. After unification, Germany took back from France German-speaking provinces. The Prussian army marched into Paris demanding a quick victory and the capital was theirs. Meanwhile, France monarchy headed by Napoleon III experienced a political coup. France became a republican state once again. The restored Republican government negotiated for peace in January 1871 with Prussian officials. The French regarded the treaty as harsh, creating a general animosity among them towards Germany. The French resentment of the terms of the treaty indirectly led to the entangled alliances preceding World War I. The French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars introduced modern ideas of equality, democracy, law, and nation. The Italian peninsula was not a main battlefield as in the past, but Napoleon changed completely its political map, destroying in 1799 the Republic of Venice, which never recovered its independence. In 1850, a liberal ministry was installed and the Kingdom of Sardinia became a driving force behind Italian unification. By 1868, feudalism and the Tokugawa shogunate ended in Japan with the Meiji Restoration. The leaders of the Meiji Restoration, as this revolution became known, acted in the name of restoring imperial rule. However, political power simply moved from the Tokugawa shogun to an oligarchy, a government ruled by a small group of wealthy, militaristic landed elites. From 1866, Japan quickly industrialized specializing in steel production, shipbuilding, and other heavy machinery. Japan created a navy similar to the British, equipped with well-trained imperial soldiers and sailors like the army in Prussia. In Japan, the government created a postal system and telegraph services, used Western-style clocks and calendars. By 1906, Japan was an industrial imperial power. With consistent victories, Russia was humiliated in this war. And in time, this would dramatically transform the balance of power in East Asia, resulting in a sober reassessment of Japan's recent entry onto the world stage.